Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Lazy Hazy Beef Chili. That's right, we call it lazy because we don't need to do any slicing or dicing or really any other kind of prep. And we call it hazy because we're going to toss in a hazy IPA. And it's called beef chili because it's beef chili. And despite all the shortcuts we're going to take, it is a tremendously delicious beef chili at that. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by tossing a couple pounds of ground beef into a pot. And then we'll turn our heat up to high. And as soon as we hear that start sizzling, we'll go ahead and start breaking it up, which I like to use a potato masher for. And we'll go ahead and start working that over until we have it broken up into as small pieces as we want. And for me personally, that means very, very small, right? When my chili's cooked, I want the meat to be almost paste-like, but that's just me. Some other folks like to have big chunks of ground beef in theirs. So this is one of those classic examples of where you're going to have to decide how fine to go. I mean, you guys are after all the Philomena kunks of how big to make these chunks. So you do it how you want, but the advantage of breaking it up really small at this point is that our chili will cook much faster and it will take less simmering time for that beef to get soft and luscious. So as you can see, I like to mix and mash this until I have fairly fine crumbles. And once we get to that point, we can switch to a spatula. And if we wanted, when we got to this point, we could continue to cook this and brown it a bit. But don't forget, this is a lazy version of chili. So once we have it looking like this, we can move on to the next step, which would be to add some of our spices and seasonings starting with some chili powder, of course, plus a little touch of ground chipotle. We will also do some freshly ground black pepper, some salt, of course, followed by the worst kept secret in the history of secret chili ingredients. And that would be a little touch of cinnamon. And what we'll do is mix that in and then cook this stirring for about a minute, just to sort of wake those spices up. And while you're doing that, don't be surprised if they kind of stick to the bottom a little bit and attach themselves to that caramelized goodness from the beef on the bottom of the pan. And the reason that's not a problem is because after about a minute, we will deglaze all that with 12 ounces of hazy IPA. And we'll go ahead and stir that in. And while a hazy IPA is not necessarily a classic choice for cooking, for a chili like this, I think it's a perfect choice. Right, that acidity, that bitterness, that little bit of sweetness really works well with everything else that's going on. And what we should do is probably let this boil on high for about two or three minutes, just to let some of that liquid evaporate. But don't worry, flavor does not evaporate. Okay, that steam is just water vapor, which we don't need. But all those flavors that we do need are going to stay right in the pot. But anyway, once we've reduced that beer for a few minutes, we'll go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients, including some white sugar, some oregano, preferably Mexican, but any kind will do. And then we'll also do a little touch of garlic powder, plus one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes, the kind with the green chilies, although just some regular diced tomatoes will work. And then we'll follow that with a lazy chili's best friend, a couple jars of chunky style salsa. And I actually used two different brands because I had two different jars, but pretty much any kind of salsa is gonna work. And by using this, we're getting our tomato product, our chilies, our peppers, our onions, and whatever else they happen to put in the one you bought. And what we'll do is stir that in and wait for this to come back to the simmer. And once that is simmering, if we're gonna use them, we can go ahead and add some beans. And what I'm using in mine is a couple cans of pinto beans that I drained but did not rinse. And what we'll do is stir those in. And once again, wait for this to come back to the simmer. And once it does, we'll reduce our heat to medium low or whatever setting gives us a nice steady simmer. And we will cook this during for about an hour or until we're happy with it, which of course means different things to different people. And if you wanted to, you could certainly simmer this longer, but if you broke your beef up into nice small pieces like I did, an hour should be plenty of time to get that meat nice and tender and certainly enough time for all those flavors to meld together. So that's how long I simmered mine. And after about an hour, it looked like this. And appearance-wise, there is nothing lazy looking about this. All right, if everything goes according to plan, this should look every bit as beautiful as a chili we didn't just phone in. So it certainly looks legit, but we obviously have to give it a taste. 
and I'm very happy to report mine tasted like a really, really good beef chili and a very unique tasting beef chili, but we'll get to that. And after that spoonful, I decided it needed a little more salt, plus a little touch of cayenne for a little more heat. So I went ahead and stirred that in and gave it another taste, which is the chef equivalent of what the carpenters say, which is measure twice, cut once. And that's it. Once we're happy with how that's tasting, we can grab a ladle and serve up. Assuming that is you're happy with the consistency. All right, if you want to thin this out with some chicken broth or beef broth to make this a little more soupy, you could do that. But for me, that had the perfect texture. So I transferred some into a bowl and moved on to the garnishing phase, which I'm going to do with some crema, which is sort of a thin Mexican style sour cream. I'm also very much into some freshly sliced green onion, as well as a little bit of hand grated sharp cheddar, which I grated by hand. And I finished up with some fresh cilantro. And that's it. My lazy, hazy beef chili was ready to enjoy. Oh, and not to brag, but I did serve this with a piece of our famous cornflake corn cake, which is a video recipe we just posted. So if you haven't seen that one yet, check it out. But anyway, back to the chili, which for a no chop, no slice, no dice, almost no work version, really is amazing. Okay, as everybody knows, the most fun part of cheating is getting away with it. And trust me, you can serve this to the biggest chili snob, and they will have absolutely no idea you cheated. As this chili lacks for nothing. Okay, this really does have the taste and texture of a classic beef and bean chili. Plus, thanks to that hazy IPA we added, this has a little certain something that's almost impossible to pick out, and nobody probably will, but that little bit of acidity and subtle bitterness and fermented funkiness, I think amplifies the flavors, which produces a chili that's very familiar, very approachable, very comfortable and comforting. And yet somehow, some way it does taste a little bit different. And if hazy IPAs aren't your thing, you could certainly just add a regular plain old beer. Or of course you could try it with no beer at all and just substitute with some chicken broth or some beef broth. Or if times are tough, just some cold fresh water. But having said that, I love everything about this, so I really do hope you try it with the Hazy IPA. And yes, as you might assume, it is an absolutely perfect pairing with that corn cake, which if you're not familiar is extremely close to a cornbread. But no matter what you serve this with, if you're feeling lazy and possibly hazy, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.